Hey guys, Brad Lee here and back for another podcast episode and I'm here with my brother Tommy. I couldn't be more excited to talk with him on the show and just for him to share his incredible journey, things that he's walked through in life. Uh, I know that you guys are going to be blessed today by by Tommy's story. So say, say hey Tommy. Good morning everyone. Good morning Brad. <laughs> yep, good to good. be here. Joy to be here. Thank you. So guys, you know we're kind of just going to walk, we're going to get right into it. I mean, we're going to walk through just, I've got a few questions for Tommy and, and how God has moved from, from beginning to end. And, but you know what, I'm just going to open up in prayer really quick before we get started. So God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. And I just pray that you would, that you would use this t- today, God, that you would use this show, that you would use um, everything that we're about to discuss, God, that it would help, that it would bless somebody else that may be walking through these same type of issues, God. Ultimately, Lord, we just want to be a blessing. We want to glorify your name, and we do that through our journey and through our story. And so, God, we're thankful for the journey, even through the hard things, through the victories, through the battles, through the mountains, through the valleys. God, we're thankful for everything that we walk through, Lord, and we trust you, and we give you our lives, and we give you all the praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Tommy, the first thing I thought that we could walk through is how you and your your precious wife met, man. Believe it or not, we met as children. We moved to Ohio at nine years old, and we were going to church together. And we grew up as kids in the same youth group. I really didn't get to know her that well until teenagers. And I was kind of whining around because I didn't have a girlfriend. And my dad said, <laughs> that little dark-headed break girl, oh, <laughs> dad, she's not my type. Yeah. Well, Things progress from there, and God put us together. I really believe that. So yeah. we started dating at the age of 16. Wow. So tell me a little bit of, you know, you say, you. how long did you guys date before you got married? How long were you married? What You know, some of those things. We dated almost three years. We were very young. I was 18. She was 19 when we when married. You first started, yeah. And started very young, but I wouldn't, to this day, I wouldn't change it. I yeah. wouldn't change it. We kind of grew up together. We had our ups and downs like every marriage does, but the Lord was in it, and we made him the partner from day one, and that's the important part about it. Yeah, that was going to be one of my yeah. next questions. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So you, you got, so you're saying that you guys were saved at the beginning of your dating or oh, marriage? or Yeah, we were both saved at a young age, and then the Lord really didn't get a, really a hold of me until 35 years old at a youth conference. Out in Colorado, I went to be a chaperone and a just a parent helper, and end up God got hold of me. That's that was the amazing part about that. <laughs> so you went to to help others. Oh experience yeah, and God. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget that day, long as I live. And God really just poured Himself on me that day, and uh, life has been so different ever since. It just gave me a hunger for His Word and a hunger for who He is. Yeah, to get to know Him better, and that was where my journey started to trust Him was on that day. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I I know I know exactly what you're talking about. I can remember that moment, that moment for me. And you know what's really cool is like it's that scripture that talks about when God begins a work in you, he's faithful to bring it to completion you, until the day amen. of Christ Jesus. And so like that was the day he started a work in you and he's been working ever since. since. Isn't that yes, cool? Sir. Just to think about it in that context. And I can still visualize and feel that day as if it was just yesterday. Me too. Me too. It's just amazing how God does that for us. It is. So tell me, how long have you been saved now? Well, roughly. Actually, I had made the first commitment when I was nine years old. Oh, okay. I really committed myself at 35. So I've been in this walk just about all my life. Uh, As I tell people, I was pretty much saved on the altar. My mom and dad were godly people, and and I've only known the Lord ever since I was just big enough to know anything. So God has really blessed me to have that kind of heritage and that kind of— But you—and this is what I like, though. I love hearing people's story because there's—same thing for me. I I remember growing up underneath the pews, like sleeping in church and hearing the message of Jesus. And, and, but it wasn't until I was like 18 until I actually encountered God for myself. And so there's a difference, right? I mean, I believe that when you ask Jesus into your heart is what I'm saying. It's not always some just crazy big encounter at that moment, but that's why I use the scripture 
God, when he's, when he begins a work in you, he's faithful to complete it, right? It's, it's kind of a journey. It's a walk, right? And so you asked Jesus in your heart at nine, but then at 35, you had an encounter with him. Big time. Yeah. So yeah. that's cool. Just to think about that process. Yeah. Well, the other thing about that is you have to understand, people have to understand, you cannot ride mom and dad's salvation. Yeah. It's yep. got to be yours yes. between you and him, that personal walk between you and him. Come on. And you cannot. Yeah, ride mom dad's coattails on that. Yeah, can't yep. do it. And I think I did. I think I was doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think many times a lot of us do. But it's that realization when you finally exactly. have that encounter for yourself. It changes everything. Absolutely, it, it changes everything. Yep. Absolutely yep. everything. So you guys, so you were in it your whole life, pretty much. You've been you've been saved your whole life. He, how did you end up at Meridian where we met? Well, we had always been involved with a good church family. We knew when we moved, we had to get established in a good church family. So we made a list, about 10 items. Yeah. And that particular church fit for them. But yeah. <laughs> we kept coming back. God kept drawing us back. So, yeah. And the main part that was top of the list, it had to be spirit Field church, yeah, led by a spirit filled yeah, pastor yes, yes. that spoke the truth. Yeah, that's what planted us there and kept yeah. us there. That's cool. What's crazy is as you're talking, I remember myself, I mean, Christina, like every day I would drive by this church, this Meridian church, and every single day that I drove by that church, I would feel this pool, dude. Mm. Like, really, I really would. Isn't that funny how God does that? God does that. And so I would keep feeling this pull to eventually I went in and, and introduced myself to the pastor and became friends. And that led, making a long story short, that led to me serving in the church where Tommy was the worship director. And so I came in and I began honestly kind of working under Tommy and Tommy, you know, today, many people, I haven't, I don't, cause we're not around each other a whole lot, but Tommy, I know he'll, he'll shy away from me saying this, but he has been a huge mentor in my life musically. He's been a huge mentor in my life as even a leader and how I lead people, how I lead a congregation in worship. He has spoke into my life so many, on so many occasions in doing worship and so that's you, very humbling <laughs> trust me very humbling and this guy he's he's super humble and that like i said i know he'll shy away from it but such a talented guy musically he knows his music but more than that he loves people and he doesn't want to lose people along the way, knows how to lead people effectively, knows how to be a team player. And uh, I just I I gleaned so much from you in being at Meridian. Well, Meridian. Well, you were very teachable. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to learn. And that we, we that's why I think we connected so well. Yeah. As we both had a piece that each other needed and we just clicked and yeah. it, it's worked out. I mean, I enjoyed that a it, lot. I know. It, it's kind of like going down memory lane a little bit, ain't it? Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> good memories. <laughs> good, Very great good. memories. Man. And so I began obviously serving in this church. I was playing the guitar and worship leading under Tommy and Pastor Mike and and me and Tommy became great friends. And also mm -hmm. Tommy's wife, Debbie, was a vocalist in the in the band. And so I would sing next to to Miss Debbie every single Sunday the sweetest lady, sweetest voice you would ever hear, and just the sweetest spirit. And and so I kind of want to, you know, I know Tommy's talked a little bit about his marriage and his dating years with Debbie, but I kind of wanted him to just walk through some of some of the hard of that he's had to, some of the hard situations he's had to walk through or anything, even in, in the music end of things, how you enjoyed working with Debbie and, and I mean, any of that, any of that leading into um, the medical thing. Well, we were, if you take personality test, they'll test you on certain things. Well, when we took our pages and laid them down, they made an X. We were completely opposites, which is a beautiful thing. It is. I've seen you compliment each yeah, other. Right. And so yeah. we had not really struggled, but had searched for some way that we could serve together and do something together. And then when the Lord put us in that capacity, and, and I said, you're coming on board with me. Yeah. You're going to sing on the team. And, it was, and she was very shy. Shyest little guy you'd ever want to meet. 
and the Lord just started working with her. And then that was something we could do together. We could minister together. We really enjoyed that part of yeah. it, being able to do that. That's awesome. Oh, it was great. I loved it. It was, and to watch her develop into this fairly confident singer yeah. that she yeah. even got to the point that she would do some solos for herself yeah. and that yeah. was unheard of. And so she wouldn't, she didn't used to do oh, that. No. Oh, oh gotcha. no. You could probably get her now, on see, stage. Now see, I didn't even know that. Yeah, so. you, you could probably get her <laughs> on stage. Well, and, I, and I'd like to think, Brad, that you helped her a lot in that because you worked with her as well yeah. and your harmonization and the things that you do yeah. and help her. Oh, it was wonderful. And yeah. so she just continued to grow in that. Yeah. And one thing I want to state about her is there's a saying that still waters run deep. Mm -hmm. That was her. Yeah. You talk about can, deep yeah. spiritually. Yeah. Oh, that girl was grounded and deep. She could stand the winds, I mean, wave and come right back up. Yeah. She was just deeply planted in her love the Lord with all of her heart. Yeah. That's, that's, that's who evident. she was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was pretty much evident if you got to know her a little yep. bit. She was quiet, but she was strong. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Every every conversation I've ever had with Debbie, she's definitely like you. There's probably two things that that I would notice about her immediately, like within ten seconds, is that she's the she had the sweetest spirit about her, just a peace. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some people that just have that. Like she just walked with that peace of God like mm -hmm. all the time, I and I just I I like I desire that, and uh, and I just love that about her. And then being grounded, you could just tell that 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 peace came from having a grounded faith in God and her love for the Lord. You could just see it. It was evident. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the part that you may not even know this, but she struggled physically for many, many years with fibromyalgia. Mm. The last six years of her life suffered greatly with back pain, but most people had no clue the pain that she suffered all the time because of her sweet spirit. She allowed that to come wow. forth versus the pain. Right. And a lot of people don't know that, but that mm. was such a godsend for her that she could, was able to do that. Yeah. Still look and smile. Yeah. Above it all. And to not, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so kind of getting to some of the, you know, some of the medical and, and the heart issues now, as you guys you know, we served for how many years together? Did we serve together before, before the, you guys found out? It was at least what, like four years? I'm thinking at least three to four. At least three least, to four years? Yeah. So at this point, we have served me, Tommy, his wife, Debbie. We had served on stage together for three to four years and just became great friends. And we were a tight team. And we were a we tight really were. team. Yeah, yep. We were good. a tight team. It was it was just an incredible time that I is very fond memories for me. And like I said, I sang next to Miss Debbie almost every single Sunday. We worked together vocally. And then tell us how, you know, everything happened. Well, we it was in the spring of twenty eighteen. We like to get out and walk. We Walked down the street. It was a little incline coming up. She started slowing down. Well, to make the long story short of it, discovered she was starting to hurt in her arm and shoulder. I'd had some CPR training years ago, and that kicked in and said, no, we got an issue here. Got her to the doctor. And over it took us a period of from May until August to get her into a cardiologist. Mm. And then found out from that, uh, that she had some blockages, and that was what was causing her pain and causing her to slow down. Mm. So she went to a hospital in nearby town that was a very good heart hospital in Cookville, and they were going to do a stent, they thought. And then when they checked her, she had three blockages in a row on the main aorta, mm. or what they call the Widowmaker, yeah. and that was too large to stent. So they decided to do open heart surgery, do a bypass surgery, mm -hmm. which that really surprised the doctor. He wasn't expecting that either. Mm. So then they scheduled her for the next day and for open heart surgery. Mm. So she was not real happy about that because well, her sure. dad had had it 20 some years prior to that. She knew what he had to go through, but she was confident the Lord was going to get her through that. Yeah. And I've got to tell you this, the cool part of the story, her dad was... 81 years old. And prior to this, in January of 18, 
That man gave his heart to the Lord. Oh, wow. 81 years old. Wow. We had been praying for him all those years. So, folks, don't give up. Yeah. Never give up. Keep praying because God's yeah. got things in store. So she was able to see that. And the night before surgery, we were sitting in the room, and she was talking. My mom and dad were down, and they were talking about the surgery. And she said, I can do this because he's okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a memory that. Yeah. And to this day, that so encourages him and brings him to tears because he knew of her diligence and praying for yeah. him. So that's just another little side story there of what God yep. had brought us through. And how much she cared for somebody else's oh, salvation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, it's your oh, father. That was, yeah. yeah, that was that was the pinnacle for okay. her to yes. see him come to the Lord. Yes, yes. I'm so... The next morning, went through surgery. Surgery went great. They did a double bypass. And about 3 o'clock in the morning, the next morning, they said they were going to gear up, change sheets, all those kinds of things yeah. that they do after surgery. And when they did, some things started going off on the monitors. And as it turned out, surgeon, they got him in there, all that. She, they were losing pulse. And she lasted about 15 hours after the surgery, and then when they, you know, moved around, which is normal, they do that. Yeah. He said, we we got a problem, and we got to get her back down to surgery. Mm. So they took her from there and headed down. What I didn't know until later was they lost her in the hallway on the way down. Mm. They were doing CPR all the way down to the wow. operating room. Wow. So I was asked to go out into the waiting room i wasn't allowed to stay in in icu <clears throat> so it ended up just being me and the lord out there <laughs> that's not a bad thing no that's the best place to be yeah. it's you and him and that had an intern it would come up excuse me intern would it would come up and give me the progress and whatever and this mm -hmm. and that and i could tell by his face it wasn't going real well yeah yeah and then finally it I wasn't really bothered or didn't feel any kind of concern until the surgeon came up and he got right here and he got right here mm -hmm. and here's what we got to do. I said the main aorta that we put in has failed and we've got to get her some blood some way. So we're going to bring the stent surgeon back in and see if we can stent. And the very words he said was a God given aorta mm. to try to get her some blood flow. Yeah. When he walked away, that's when I had this sense of, oh boy, this isn't good. Yeah. That's when me and the Lord had our talk. <laughs> and it was it was the coolest thing because God set it up. It was just me and him. There was yeah. no one else around. That's wild. My son was on his way. My parents were on the way. They hadn't got there yet. Mm. Just me and the Lord. And I talked to him, Brad, just as I'm sitting here talking to you and talking in the room. And I said, Lord. You, you you know I don't want to lose her. You you know that we've had a wonderful marriage, and I just went through all these different things. But I said, Lord, it's not about what I want. Mm. It's about what you want, and, and you're in control here. And that was a, probably the hardest prayer, Brad. Mm. I ever prayed in my whole life. But again, we have to realize that it's his will, not our will. Yep. And I said, Lord— if this is what you decide to do, mm. I'm good with it. And a little later in my prayer, I said, Lord, you know, I, like Jesus prayed in the garden, I want this cup to pass from me. I don't want to drink this cup. Yeah. But as Jesus said, it's about your will and not my will. And that's when I started to get a little bit of peace about things. And moments go by, it seems like hours, you know, and, and I said, Lord, if you decide to take her, I'm going to need two things. I didn't ask, <laughs> but I didn't demand either. Right. Because doesn't the scripture tells us the Father already knows what we need before we, we need yep, it? Yep, yep. If your child asks you for a piece of bread, will you give them a stone? Yeah, right, exactly. He knew what I needed before I asked. Yep. And I said, Lord, I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need the strength of Samson and the wisdom of Solomon, because mm. there's going to be a lot of people hurting out there in that room. Mm. Her parents hadn't got there yet, so we're going to have to face all of that. Yep. Parents in her 80s, and here she's 61 years Losing old. Losing their kids. You shouldn't yeah. bury your children. Nope, nope. 
And then that's when I felt this peace and this strength come over me. And I looked up in the corner and I said, as Job said, Lord, though you slay me, I will trust you. That was hard. But the strength that he gave me, Brad, it was as if there was a steel rod put in my back. They come up. By that time, my son got there. My parents got there. I told them this don't look good. They come up and said, we need to meet you in this room. Well, when they do that, you know. Yeah. So they put us in there, and not one, but all four of the men working on her came in the room, which is very unusual. Yeah. A couple of them, tears in her eyes. I looked at them. I said, boys, she didn't make it, did she? And they said, no. So they come over and sit down and was telling us basically what happened and kind of what was going on. And the interesting part about it was they said that when he started the stint in her body, because they could see on the screen what was going on. Yeah. She clotted from one end of her body to the other. Mm. It was nothing they could do about that. Yeah. And I looked right at them and I said, boys, God called her home. Yeah. It's not on you. And tell me how I've done this, Brad, only by the grace of God and his strength. <laughs> I said, boys, can I pray for you? Mm. And I prayed a prayer asking God to not, for them to not hold that to their account. Mm. Boys, you did. God blessed you with talents and you did all you could do. Jeez. Please don't take this home with you. God called her home. And God gave me that peace, Brad, immediately that it was him. It was his direction. It had nothing to do with man. And that was such a comfort to me to know it was God's decision because I've learned to trust and know that God only does the best for the situation. Maybe it don't feel like it at the time, but you know when you trust the Lord, it's going to be the best outcome that you could ever have. Yep. For everyone involved, and that is very difficult to accept that sometimes, you know. So after that, we had to console the family and all of that. And one of the hardest parts of this thing, there was no tears. I was very able, strong, because I was kind of having to carry everyone. He gave you that, that strength. Oh, my gosh. And, that's what I asked for. Yep. And he gave it to me. He did. And, and to this day, I, I, I marvel at what God did that day. Yeah. The parents come in, had to deal with them the grief, all of that. My sister on the phone in Ohio when I called her, just the grief of everyone. It's hard yeah. to watch others grieve. Yes. It's very difficult and it's touching. But God allowed me to remain strong until Dad come up to me and he said, and I'm, and I'm not saying this to blow my horn and please don't think that. I want all of this to give glory to God. Sure. He said, son, he said, the surgeon just come up to me and put his arm around me, shook my hand. Looked me in the eye and then said, I've never seen the faith of a man like that in there. Mm. Wow. That's when I broke. Yeah. I said, no, Dad, no. No. Wasn't me. Yeah. It was him. Yeah. It was all him. I don't want any of the credit. That's the only time I broke and cried <laughs> is because I wanted God to get the credit. Yeah. I dried up my tears. We got everything all taken care of and settled up. Father-in-law was really struggling, having a hard time with it. And we got back home and I said, and the Lord kept giving me bits and pieces of things of confirmation. I said, uh, kept talking about, why didn't he take me? Yeah. My health isn't that good. I've had, I've already had bypass of 80 some years, yada, yada. And I, the Lord gave me this. I looked right at him and I said, do you realize by you standing here that she will never bury you, her mom? Her husband, her yeah. son, her grandson, or anyone else. Yeah. We got a man up and carry that for her. Yeah. Since we're here, we carry her burden. Yeah. And it was amazing how God, time after time, yeah. just, just kept, bring, the word just kept bringing yeah. things like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, to, and it's such a confirmation. And those are times that, like, I know that normally, in a normal situation, you would almost be speechless. But God was giving you the words to say Absolutely. to each and every person is, is incredible. In fact, after we got back home, Dad walked up to him. And Dad, being a godly man all my life, he walked up to him and he said, Son, it wasn't you in that room, was it? <laughs> he knew. He knew. No, Dad. No, it wasn't. It was all him. It's all God. Yeah. One hundred percent. That's so good, man. We have not, Brad, because we ask not. And in that moment, when you ask God, 
and he knows it's what you need, he's going to give it to you. That's that's it. That's it. He will. He is faithful to give you what he wants you to have. Yeah. And because, like you, you know, and you prayed, just just that prayer, like to pray the hardest prayer of your life. Like when I listen to you talk about this journey, I can't help but it's just natural for me. I put myself in people's shoes, and and I just think about my own wife. And could I pray that that same prayer in that moment? And man, honestly, I don't. It would have to be God. So I know exactly Absolutely. what you're saying. <laughs> it would have to be God. Like, it would have to be. Well, sitting here today, I couldn't tell you I could do it again the same way. Yeah. But when you need him, he's, he's there. He time. gave you the strength yeah. of when you need it. And that's the important part of trust. I want to read a scripture here. Yeah. Yeah. In Psalm chapter 62, it says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Wow. That's a rock to build on. Yeah. Excuse me. And I'll never be shaken. No. It's just awesome how, you know, for people that that don't understand salvation and this journey and walking with God in your life— like, there's just no way that I could walk through many things in life without him. Like, it, it, I, it's, it's such a need and dependency upon God in this life. And I just, I can't imagine, I can't imagine walking through life without, without God. Well, it, it was very evident to me in the days after her passing mm-hmm. that you're in your humanness, you're going to grieve. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's okay. Yeah. It, when you have a, Godly marriage, it feels like half of you is just torn off and you've got this raw, open sore there. Yeah, and yeah. you have to be careful that the enemy doesn't backfill and do all kinds of things there. Yeah. But God is a healing bomb. Yeah. And he will take care of that. It helped me understand why people turn to the bottle. Yeah. They turn to drugs. Sure. They turn to everything else. What are they trying to do? They're just trying to kill the pain. Yeah. They're trying to ease that hurt. To numb it. Yeah. When yeah. you got the Lord, yep. he will ease you. And that, that, that is, man, it's so true. He is what you turn to. Yeah. Yeah. There's a song that you and I have done many times. I run to the Father. Yeah. Again yeah. and again and again and again. That's what he wants us to do. Our dependence, our salvation, everything we have is rock solid mm. in him. That's so good, man. So good. And especially for people watching and like, you know, just to know that no matter what you're walking through, no matter if it's if it's grief and losing your your wife or your husband or your spouse or or losing a child or losing a parent, no matter whether it's addiction or whether you have a prodigal son or daughter that Amen. needs to return home, no matter what it is, he is our defender. He is our present help in time of need. And we will not be shaken, not because of us, not because of anything that we can do, <laughs> but Absolutely all because not. of his power, man, all because he is God. He's sovereign, right? Through it all. Like no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance is, he is still God. There's a song that we used to sing that you are God alone, yeah. that me and yeah. Deb used to right. sing yeah. all the time, that like, like in the good times and the bad. You are God alone. Yeah. Uh, Another scripture in Psalm 112, verse 7. Verse 1 is, Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. Verse 7, he will have no fear of bad news. Mm. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Steadfast. It's rock solid. It's rock solid. That's another one we used to do a lot. Yeah, the we, solid we, rock. <laughs> we, we did that a lot. <laughs> We've done so many songs together. Man, it's it's just absolutely it. every time I've heard Tommy, you know, share this journey and his story several times in in church services and things like that. And it just blesses me because that's the kind of faith and closeness to God that I that I aspire to have. It comes from him. Yep. We don't have it. No, we don't. He gives it to us. He does. But it is that asking, right? It's like, and and that's what, 
If you are listening right now and you're walking through any of those situations that we just talked about or anything other, even if it's different than the situation, ask him, ask him for what you need. Ask him for the strength. Ask him to be able to endure these things. Ask him. He will, he will show up and may, it's not always on the timetable that we think it needs to be, but in that moment of you asking him, God knew that, okay, this is my son and he needs me. And that, and that, and he's that for you. Faithful and he, true. He is. He is. He's faithful and true. He shows up on time. And uh, no matter if it's a, a victory or a battle, he's sovereign and he's there through it all. It's his promise. You know, it's like the song that I wrote for Dave that was walking through stage four bone cancer, mm-hmm. that God is with us through it all. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It's his promise to us. And he showed up, right? That day for you, he Absolutely. didn't leave. He didn't no. forsake you. He was right no. there with you, walking with you. He was your words. He was your strength. He was everything. Everything. And he gets the glory from it. Yes, not me, not in my strength. It yeah. was all his. It was all his. And that's what's great is he does get the glory from it. And that you give him the glory. Oh, absolutely. Each and every time you talk, and that's oh, evident. Absolutely. And that's evident, man. You know, uh, after all of that took place, what, or even even during, during, like when you found out and you talk about God being your strength and how you ask mm-hmm. him for that strength. When was the, I know you, you said it briefly a moment. I kind of wanted to circle back to it, but you said there was this moment where you almost like experienced the peace, almost like this, this moment of like, man, you know what? I know the situation is bad, but I know it's, it's kind of like that song. It is well, right? It's okay. Like it's, 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 exactly. okay, it's okay. Like there's like, you felt, you almost, felt, you said something like that. Like you felt this peace almost kind of come over you. Did. Absolutely. I did. Did you, how was that? Was it just like, was it like this supernatural thing? It absolutely know? was. And, and I knew where it came from. Yeah. I knew where the strength and I immediately felt the strength. Yeah. Was it I when you were talking the to the pump. doctor? No, what? it was, it, it was it, when you went it, to go pray. Well, it actually, when me and the Lord was having our chat, gotcha. I call it that. You yeah. call it prayer. You call it, but chat, me yeah. and the Lord and we was were talking, talking that day. <laughs> talking you know, to Jesus. Well, I was talking to him yeah. and it was this conversation we yeah, had back and forth. I love that. And I, and I'm not saying, I don't, I don't mean that in any kind of, of unhealthy or disrespectful no, kind no. of mode, but no. If we can talk to God that way, that's the relationship he Absolutely. wants to Absolutely. pour our heart out. He knows when we're hurting anyway, just pour it out to him yeah. and be real. Yeah. If there's anything, we've got to be real. Yes. You know. And that's why I, lo- I, like, I have a lot of people always ask me to sing that song, Talking to Jesus. Mm-hmm. The whole song is like, I always tell people as I'm singing that last verse, it's literally how we're supposed to pray. It says there's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad time to start. It doesn't have to look pretty. Just tell them what's on your heart. I love and so, that. I love <laughs> you, that. You That's did absolutely that. Absolutely, 100%. You did that yeah. that day, man. And and just to, as you're talking to him, to experience that peace, to know that, you know what, God, I know that this isn't, like you said, this isn't a favorable situation. I would rather this cup pass yeah. from me. But if this be your will, like it's like Jesus in the garden, man. That was in in. in, in I was not even close to his situation. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I understood yeah. why he asked because he didn't want to go through it. Yeah. But the key was. But it's not my will. Well, it's your will. And you, that, you that, said that's, that's it. Yeah. That's see, but that's not how the Holy Spirit works, mm. though, Brad. When we need things, He gives us yearnings. He knows what we need before we need it. And there's a thing that I probably have never told you this, and it came to me. Weeks later, why weren't you on your knees begging for your wife's life? Mm. Think about that a second. Sure. Why wasn't I begging for her life and just saying, okay, God, it's okay? Because I think your trust in God. If the Holy Spirit knew that there was a shot she could live, he'd have put that on my heart. Uh, yeah, exactly. He already knew she was gone. Right. And, and that's and what I mean. See, see that's, yep. that's the part that it was like, I felt bad. I'm like, oh my, why wasn't I pleading? But then the Lord said, no, you prayed what you were asked to pray. Yeah. You prayed what you were told to pray and God will give it to you. Whatever you need, he's going to give it to you. 
And it's kind of like, again, I go back to Jesus in the garden. He could have begged, and, and, and but, but he knew no. it's not my will, though, God. It's I want to do your Lord will. will. Yeah. It's the will of the Father. Yeah. 100%. And, and you had a peace. He gave you that peace. He mm-hmm. gave you the strength. He gave you the words. And, and, and there's, there's a comfort in that. There's a peace in that. Well, the strength not only was for that day. Now, but to come. I did my grieving, but that was for weeks and almost mm-hmm. months before I ever come to the point to where I just broke down and wept. Yeah. And that was okay because I had a lot of things to take care of. I had family members and folks that needed me to be strong. God knew that. And he gave me that in that time. Even you remember, and my dear brother here was leading worship at the memorial service we had for her. Yes. And in fact, the very, the, 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 she passed on Saturday. We came and done music the other Sunday morning, yeah. the very next morning, and not blowing our horn, but it was about, well, where do I need to be? I need to be with God's people yeah. in worship. And sitting there playing the keyboard and looking at where she stood, I couldn't have pulled a tear because what happened is we went into worship, it pulled me to him. It wiped out. And, and I can encourage you folks, if you're in deep grief, get in worship. Yeah. Worship and yeah. God will wipe, he'll, he'll help wipe that There's away. There's healing there. There's yeah, healing yeah. in that. Yep. And, and because you're with the Father. You're, you're absolutely in. with the Father. <laughs> and the same thing happened at the memorial service, if you remember. And I couldn't weep. I mean, there was a body there. I couldn't weep. She wasn't there. I knew where she was at. I didn't have to worry about her. And if this is one of the only, seriously, I've been, listen, as a worship pastor, I I do funerals and I go to funerals a lot uh, or celebration of life services, whatever you want to call them. This is one of the only celebrate, like that was a true, true celebration service. I mean, Saturday, it happened. Like you said, Sunday, we're in church having the celebration of life service and, or was well, it Monday? Tuesday? Was it Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Sunday we had church and then yeah. Tuesday, the celebration of life service. And it was, it was a true celebration. People were worshiping in the, Literally in the church were. and it was absolutely this there again, it was this sense of like, you know what? It was a true celebration of her life and all of her accomplishments, what God did through giving it all, glory to and the, the glory, and Absolutely. ultimately giving glory to God for everything. And then, what was the last song that you sang? Do you remember? What it wasn't at the Solid Rock. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you end it? <laughs> Ended it with that that tag of on on Christ the Solid Rock I, I stand. stand. It yeah. wasn't about the sinking sand. Yeah, it was on Christ the Solid, solid rock, rock I stand. Which goes back to what you were saying just a little while ago, man. It's incredible. It all ties together. Yeah. You know. There's a song that comes to mind, and we're going to do it here for long. It is well with my soul. Oh, yeah. And you look at the words of that. When peace like a river yeah. attendeth my way. Oh, that's the good times. Yeah. When sorrow rose like sea billows roll. Yeah. If you've ever been to the sea and watched the <laughs> waves talk, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tumultuous. Yeah. It's very yeah. Mm-hmm. strong. Yes. There's your two opposites. Yeah. Whatever my lot, yeah. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, yeah. It is well with my soul, soul. because of the scriptures we've read. So, he's my stronghold. Yeah. He's my fortress. Man, we have to stand on that, yeah. and only He can give us that. Only Him. Only Him. It's so true. So, guys, with that being said, I'm just so thankful for my brother Tommy. Love him so much, you man. Too, brother, I'm so thankful he's able to come on here and share this journey. And, but I want him, you know, as I, as I said earlier, um, we played music together many years and he is such a talented musician, but more than that, God has gifted this man to play. So check out this video coming up next. Mm -hmm. 